This is the ultimate breeding guide for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Okay, so one of the first things you want to do is head over to this town of Medali because this is the place where you will be able to find dittos pretty easily and it's a fast teleport area. To help you out on the map, this is an area map of where Ditto's habitat is. It says it lives near towns and cities, and it disguises itself as other Pokemon. So this is a very big hit of where Ditto could possibly be and what Pokemon it is. So a little trial and error, you pay attention to how the Pokemon are behaving, and you should be able to bump into a Ditto. So let's go ahead and bump into summon. Maybe I get lucky. That's not normal. It's not coming at me. Okay, persons usually attack you. This one's not. This could possibly be our Ditto. There we go. We got a Ditto. Okay. Yeah, you saw that weird behavior. So pay attention to Pokemon that normally come after you, but they start to act a little weird. And that is how you find a Ditto. Now, because this is an open world game, it is pretty easy to get Ditto. And Ditto is the universal breeder of all Pokemon. Any Pokemon can breed with Ditto. Hence why you should probably go ahead and grab a Ditto. But if you wanted to breed with other Pokemon that are not Ditto, all you have to do is make sure that they are in the exact same egg species group. A great website and tool to use will be Cerebi.net. I'm going to make sure to link this down in the description below for you guys. But basically, if you want to see what egg group your Pokemon is in, for example, if we were to see something in the field group, there's a lot of new Pokemon in there. Okay, let's say we're in the field group and we grab something like Palmy. Let's say you found a Palmy and you wanted to breed it with something like a Cyclizar, or if you just want to look back and see the starters, they're also in the field group. So again, this is a very great website and tool to see what Pokemon fit in what egg group so you can know compatibility because you don't want to be in a position where you are trying to breed Pokemon together and they're just not making eggs. It's a very big waste of time to do that. Okay, so the big question is how do you make eggs? Like I mentioned before, you have to have a compatible Pokemon or you can use Ditto. If you want to get eggs really fast, you have to have something known as egg power. I'm going to be linking you this Google spreadsheet that pretty much tells you what ingredients do what. You can see that tomatoes are going to be for encounter power. And if we go to anything really sweet here, you're going to see that it has more of an impact, for example, on things like egg power. So apples are sweet, egg power. So you can go through this Excel sheet. It's again, it's going to be linked down in the description below and you can figure out what sandwiches you want to make. I also want to state you can go around to any shop in the game and you'll find something that has egg power one. Once you consume that and eat that at a restaurant or a shop in town or at your picnic, if you make an, a sandwich that boosts egg power, you then will be able to produce eggs a lot faster. If you went to class, you would know that sweet foods help with egg power. And this was confirmed by the teacher itself. So make sure you go to class and pay attention for things like this. How many eggs can you make at once? The total amount of eggs you can get by just waiting is 10. After 10 eggs, the stack is done. So they can completely stack up to 10 eggs. You have to take out all the eggs. The eggs will then go into the inventory box that you last set up, your Pokemon box. The last one you had set up is where the eggs will start stacking up. Then you can wait again and go ahead and collect more eggs. Now you'll know how long you'll be able to collect these eggs fast by hitting the right arrow. That'll show all the powers you have and the boost and for how long. To know how long you have egg powers for, just go ahead and hit the right control stick and it'll show the timer counting down. The best thing you can do is open up your phone and set a 30 minute timer. And as soon as you have that buff, hit that 30 minute timer. So that way you don't have to keep checking the time and see how long that buff lasts for and your phone can just tell you what to do. How can you hatch your eggs fast? If you have the current bonus from the egg powers one, two, or three, and you have a Pokemon leading at your party with flame body, Pokemon that do have flame body in this game are Fletchling, Charcadet, and Volcarona. Those are great Pokemon that have flame body and they'll help your eggs hatch faster. If you combine flame body and you combine the egg power, your Pokemon's gonna hatch so much more faster. This was also tested and this information was provided by Matt. So thank you, Matt, for doing the research on a lot of these points for breeding. Make sure to exit the picnic and start running with your mount in order to hatch these eggs really fast. After you hatch that batch, you can go back in your Pokemon box and get the next batch of eggs and keep on hatching with that flame body and egg power. Real quick, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button so we can catch all these dragon Pokemon and get them right on to the finish line. Thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button and let's get on with the video. So the first thing is what are base stats and what do they really mean? So I'm going to open this Gengar and go to this screen and you can see on the top right side you have HP, which is going to be the health the Pokemon has. Special attack is going to be all the special attack moves it has. Basically, they're not going to make direct contact. Physical attack, which is basically attacks. 
is going to be lower on this Pokemon. You can see that this is a special attacker. Special defense is whether they can handle that special attack. Defense is how much of the attack that Pokemon can handle. Their level of defense means they resist attack more. So these kind of go hand in hand. That's why you have attack and defense right from each other and special attack and special defense. And speed is going to basically determine how fast your Pokemon is. If you have a higher speed than another Pokemon, you're going to move faster than them and most likely put your move to do damage before they can probably move on the field. If you look at Dream Eater, you can see that it has a circle, circle, circle right to the left of me over here. And that is indicating that it is a special attack versus something like Sucker Punch. You can see that spiky explosion looking thing. That is indicating that it is a regular attack or a physical attack. So knowing these stats is going to be very important to knowing how your Pokemon is built. Something new that they added in Scarlet and Violet is removing something known as split breeding. Basically, pseudo Wudos will now be able to breed out Bonsleys without the incense. Marils will be able to make the babies. Pikachus will now be able to make Pichus. And all the baby baby Pokemon can basically be made when you breed. Like it's supposed to be. Because I think it's weird that a Pikachu back in the day would make a Pichu. And all these adult Pokemon would make the same adult Pokemon. So they basically took out incense and that's all you need to know about that. What are Pokemon natures? I opened up this Gengar just to help explain this. So we're going to go ahead to the final summary stat and you're going to see that above there it is brave in nature. And what brave means is if you look at this entire diagram on the left, you can see that the attack has a red up and the speed has a blue down. So by that, you can now know that every single nature that is brave is going to increase attack and decrease speed. And for Gengar, that's not good because he's a special attacker. So this nature is pretty much useless on it and I'm gonna want a different one. So in this game, there are 25 natures and a great thing that you can do is always check the natures of your Pokemon so you know what they're really good at. You can see on this chart that there is things like Bashful, Docile, Hardy, Quirky, and Serious. These do not have any benefits or they do not have any cons to them. They're just natures that stay flat. So you can determine if you would like to have that on a Pokemon. But then you have natures like Adamant, Brave, lonely and naughty these all are going to be boosting attack while decreasing things like special attack speed defense and special defense a great example is if i have a powerful pokemon that can use a lot of physical attacks and punches like a fighting pokemon i'm probably going to want adamant because i'm never going to be using special attack and i just want to boost attack so that's how you would think of natures by this chart moving down we have bold impish lax relax these are all going to boost defense so Pokemon with defense are going to be able to take physical attacks and defend better against those. And those also have their consequences and trade-offs. We have Modest, Mild, Quiet, and Rash. Those are all going to be great for special attackers. Those are great. A great one to look at is Modest. If I have a pure special attacker Pokemon, maybe one that just shoots electric attacks and special beams and hyper beams and dragon pulses, I'm going to want to have Modest because it's going to boost all that while decreasing attack. And I should have no consequences because attack is going to be just physical. Moving along the list, we have things like Calm, Careful, Gentle, and Sassy these are going to be reducing special defense and the ones below are really meant to speed up your pokemon more than they should be already uh you have hasty jolly naive and timid jolly is really meant for physical attackers because you're going to increase the speed while decreasing the special attack so those are two notable ones to also take a look at when it comes to boosting speed with certain pokemon natures how can i get the right nature on my pokemon in the wild luckily game freak has created pokemon that have this nice ability called synchronize now what synchronize does is if that pokemon is the first one leading in your party it'll cause any pokemon you interact with in the wild to be the exact same nature as the Pokemon leading your party. So if you're someone who's crazy like me, you probably want to go ahead and catch a bunch of different synchronized Pokemon with natures that matter and go ahead and encounter Pokemon that you want. Now, Pokemon that do have synchronized in this game are going to be Rabska, which is a dung beetle, the evolution of it, Espeon, Umbreon has synchronized, Ralts is an area one, a uh, very good Pokemon with synchronize from the early game, and Indeedee, which is also in the game. Those Pokemon will definitely help you find natural natures so you don't have to really try to figure out how to get the right nature. It's a very good early game strat as well. There are also some very unnatural ways of making your Pokemon have the right nature. These things are called nature mints. And basically what they do is when you apply 
a nature into a Pokemon, it switches the bonus and the decrease of the stat to match that nature. For example, if I had a modest Pokemon with increased special attack and decreased attack, and I add a adamant mint to it, it's then going to get an increase in attack and a decrease in special attack. That's all it's going to do. And when I do happen to decide to breed that later, that mint will not pass down to my baby. My Pokemon is still going to be the original nature that I started off with. So mints are just like an effect for your Pokemon that are currently there. Nothing to pass on. But it's a great way to get your Pokemon to be competitive without having to go through breeding. If you need to buy nature mints, you can go ahead to the Chansey Supply. As you unlock them, they will show up there. So all you got to do is just buy them with your LP or money and adjust the pokemon stats to match whatever nature you were going for it's a really fast way to make a garbage pokemon into a good pokemon now this next item can be bought from the deli bird present shop this is going to be the everstone now what is the big deal about an everstone everstones if you put it on a pokemon and it's a parent it'll 100 percent pass down the nature from that parent to the baby so if i had an adamant parent attach it with an Everstone, the babies will then be adamant, just like that. So that is the natural way of passing it down, and that's how you guarantee 100% passing a nature from a parent to a baby. So all three things like Synchronize, Nature Mints, and Everstones are ways you can get the buff in the proper nature that you want. Those are the ways to secure the right nature on your Pokemon. This is a really confusing thing for a lot of current Pokemon players and a lot of new players. What is the difference between IVs and EVs? The best way to remember this is I stands for inherited values, or in this game, it's actually called individual values, and E stands for effort values. And you have to think of this like, I have to do effort to get these values. So IVs you are born with, EVs you have to train to get these. But don't worry about EVs. I'm going to have a whole other video dedicated to that. In order to see IVs in the game, you're going to have to complete the main three story paths. And once you talk to a Nurse Joy at a Pokemon Center station, it is then going to give you the notification that you have unlocked this feature. Now to see this feature, I'm going to just open up my Pokemon menu. I'm going to go ahead and click on my boxes. Once I click on my boxes, I'm then going to select this Gengar. And you can see something at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to just move my head above it right, right below me. It's called Judge. Uh, you're going to unlock Judge. And once you click on Judge, just like that, you're going to see things on the Pokemon like Decent, Pretty Good, Best, 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 Best. Now, I'm going to pull up this chart. And basically, IVs, like we mentioned, are determined from when the Pokemon are born or when you find them out in the wild. This Gengar specifically was found in a five-star Terra Raid Den, which pretty much confirms you're going to get high IV Pokemon from these Terra Raids. And the only thing you need to know is that when a Pokemon is born, it is either going to have an IV stat ranging from 0 to 31. And what you just want to have is best. And best equals 31 in a stat. So if it says best, it is a perfect IV. So this Gengar essentially is perfect in attack, special attack, HP, and defense. But it is decent, really bad. <laughs> Decent's not the best in special defense. So special attacks can probably do a lot of damage to my Gengar. And its speed is pretty good, which is not the best. Gengar, I want to have as a fast Pokemon. So the IVs to me matter. I want Gengar to be a fast speed Pokemon and a fast special attack Pokemon. So my goal is to have IVs in all of that. Now, an unnatural way to gain IVs in this game is going to be by simply using these items called bottle caps. Silver bottle caps are going to increase one IV to a max stat. Gold bottle caps will increase all these stats to basically be best. Now, just like Nature Mints, these bottle caps will not let your Pokemon pass down these enhanced IVs down to baby Pokemon, but it is going to be really good if you just got a Pokemon, you quickly want to change the nature, you put a nature mint on it, and you quickly want to get its stats to 6 IV, you throw some bottle caps on it, and just like that, you have a full-blown, all-powerful Pokemon using these unnatural items. So this is if you're going the non-breeding route, which is going to cost you money and having to take down raid dens. Now, there are some very important items for breeding, and the big one is going to be the Destiny Knot. You can go ahead and purchase the Destiny Knot from Deli Bird Presents. If it doesn't show up in your shop, you just have to progress further in the story until it does. Now, what exactly does the Destiny Knot do? The Destiny Knot passes five random IVs from both parents. In this graphic example I have on screen, I have a male Starly and a female Starly, and both of them are going to have six IVs each, indicated by the name best on both of them. 
When you give a Destiny Knot to one of the Starlies and they both breed, it will randomly select five IVs from both parents and give it to the child. In this example, we got a perfect IV from HP, defense, and special defense from the male. And from the female, we got a perfect attack and speed and that is sent over. The one that is not carried over in this RNG example is the special attack stat. That one is going to be random anywhere from 0 to 31. So you're going to have to rely on RNG for that. To kind of stop a little bit of RNG from this random destiny nod, they've also included power items in this game. And this is something that you can get very early on, as soon as you start your game. These power items, by the way, can also be used for EV training. But again, that's going to be talked about in another video. Here are some of the power items. You have the Power Bracer, which is attack, Power Belt, which represents defense, Power Lens, which is special attack, Power Band, which is special defense, the Power Anklet, which is speed, and the Power Weight, which is for HP. Now, here's the fun thing. If you put this power item on a parent, it's going to guarantee that that specific IV from that stat is going to be 100% passed down to the baby. So if I put a power bracer on a guard chomp that has a perfect 6 IV, then its baby is going to have a perfect 6 IV in attack. If you have two Pokemon that are 6 IV and you take a destiny knot on one parent and you put a power item on the second parent, then you'll get a random 5 IV selection from both parents. But the difference is one of those IVs aren't random. So it's four random and one guaranteed because of the power item. So this can help you when you are determining what exactly you want to have on your Pokemon. Another big item for breeding is going to be the Shiny Charm. The Shiny Charm you can obtain once you collect every single Pokemon in the game and show that to Jacques and he will hand you the Shiny Charm. And this is going to help boost Shiny Pokemon hatching from your eggs. But let's go over the Shiny data real quick so you know exactly how this works. So the base shiny rate without anything is 1 out of 4096. If you have the shiny charm, that is going to be a 1 out of 2048. If you do the Masuda method, which is taking Pokemon that has a different language or from a foreign Nintendo Switch and putting it with your Pokemon on your Nintendo Switch together, if someone trades you over. So make sure you ask a friend from a different region to send you over their Pokemon, especially a Ditto. Dittos are the best because I said they can breed with everything. Then you're going to have a 1 out of 683 chance of having a shiny Pokemon with just the Masuda method, not even the shiny charm. Out of 683 eggs you have a chance of one pokemon being shiny and if you do the shiny charm plus the masuda method together then you're going to have a one out of 512 chance of getting a shiny pokemon so that's the shinies for the eggs this part is going to be talking about pokeball breeding what is pokeball breeding it's when you're trying to get a specific pokeball passed on to the babies so in this example on this chart we have a ditto that's caught in a regular pokeball a lechonk that's caught in a dusk ball and it shows that if you breed any lechonk with a ditto it could even be a genderless pokemon like magnemite you will then get a lechonk with a dusk ball so balls will always pass down from male or female to the baby pokemon on the first example if you have a male lechonk with a pokeball and a female lechonk with a dusk ball they have a 50% chance of having either Pokeball dedicated to that Pokemon. They have a 50% chance of having either Pokeball being on the babies of that Pokemon. Now, if you take Pokemon that are part of the same egg group, which we've talked about at the beginning of this video, if I have a Lechonk with a Pokeball and I have a Meowth with a Dusk Ball, then the Meowth will be the one that is going to be the baby and have the Dusk Ball. Basically, females are going to determine the Pokemon species of the baby, and they're also going to be the ones responsible for passing the balls down. Not the males, the females. There are three Pokeballs that cannot be passed down. The Master Balls, the Cherish Balls, and any balls that come from Hisui. They're all going to be turned into Pokeballs in the game when you're trying to pass on the balls to other Pokemon. And most likely the Hisui Balls will just transform into Pokeballs when they come into this game. Now let's talk about hidden ability breeding. By the way, hidden ability doesn't just naturally spawn in a Pokemon. You have to get hidden abilities from Terra Raid Dens or from special encounters or gift Pokemon in order to have them. They're not going to just be randomly appearing on a Pokemon you're breeding with. You can also get hidden ability Pokemon by using an item drop from raids known as the ability capsule. So keep that in mind with hidden abilities. So this only applies if you have a hidden ability Pokemon. Let's start off. So if you have any Pokemon with a hidden ability and you're breeding 
mating with a ditto, you have a 60% chance of that offspring or baby Pokemon being hidden ability. If we have a hidden ability male Pokemon and a hidden ability female Pokemon of the same species, they're also going to have a 60% chance of having a hidden ability offspring. If you have a male Pokemon and a female Pokemon with hidden ability, you're also going to be having a 60% chance of hidden ability being passed on. What this can tell you is that the female Pokemon are very important in sending down not only just Pokemon balls and Pokemon species, but also responsible for hidden ability. If you have a male Pokemon with hidden ability with a female Pokemon with no hidden ability, you have a 0% chance of the hidden ability being on that baby Pokemon. If you have a male with hidden ability and a female different species with no hidden ability, you're going to have a 0% chance of having that offspring with hidden ability. Males just don't want to pass on their hidden ability. A male Lechonk with no hidden ability and a Meowth female with hidden ability, you're then going to have a 60% chance of getting that different species Pokemon with hidden ability. Now, this is something new in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and this discovery was also found out by Matt. Basically, to share an egg move from another Pokemon, the target must be holding a Mirror Herb. This is even possible with Pokemon of different species and egg groups. A Hariyama with Fake Out can give that move to Grookey, despite them being in completely different egg groups. This is a big deal because now Pokemon of different species, if they have that egg move in their pool, can share that move with another species by just holding that herb. So big game changers when it comes to egg moves and making it a lot easier for people than just having to breed these egg moves down. Let's also talk about the new one, Terra type breeding. Now Terra type does not pass down. For example, I caught a Gengar in a Terra raid den and it was an electric Terra type. When I bred that Gengar with Ditto, the baby Gastly's were either just poison or ghost. So they had a 50% chance of being either of the dual type Gengar. So you cannot pass on different Terra types that don't naturally belong to the Pokemon initially. So I hope that makes sense. There's a lot more things to talk about, but you're going to have to click on this video to find out more information.